Have you ever heard the phrase, use it or lose it, when it comes to men's health? According to the Massachusetts Male Aging Study, 1994, around 52% of men aged 40 to 70 experienced some degree of erectile dysfunction at some point in their lives. This statistic underscores a vital truth. The male body thrives on regular sexual engagement and healthy blood flow to maintain optimal function. If you drastically reduce or entirely stop using your penis as you get older, your body can start to exhibit a range of avoidable problems, from reduced elasticity to more severe issues like fibrosis or erectile dysfunction. But it doesn't have to be this way. Today, I'll walk you through the key reasons older men might let their sexual activity wane, plus the health risks that come with this choice. I'll also explore practical solutions like Kegel exercises, vacuum pumps, and even medical treatments that can help you reclaim intimacy and preserve your overall well being. Before I dive into these details, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and tap that notification bell so you never miss our latest updates. And if this discussion resonates with you, please give it a like. It truly helps more people discover our content and join us in nurturing a healthier outlook on sexuality at every stage of life. Feel free to type yes in the comments if you find our topic useful. If you find it unhelpful or irrelevant, simply type no. Your feedback matters more than you know. Now, let's talk about the factors that can lead you to stop using your penis in older age. And more importantly, how to prevent or reverse the negative impacts of this decision. Reason number one, relationship struggles. A committed partnership can be one of life's greatest joys, but it's also where disagreements and misunderstandings often surface. Chronic conflict, ongoing arguments, poor communication, or a lingering emotional disconnect can drain your desire for intimacy. Over time, unresolved tension creates a wedge between partners and that closeness you once cherished might all but disappear. If you and your partner are no longer sharing emotional or physical affection, you may feel alone despite living under the same roof. This distance quietly erodes sexual desire. It can become so ingrained in daily life that you almost forget how crucial intimacy is for emotional well being. However, these challenges don't have to be permanent. Open communication is key. Scheduling regular moments to talk candidly about what's bothering you can do wonders for rekindling the warmth in a relationship. Additionally, there are tangible resources to help navigate difficulties. I'd like to highlight my digital book, Rediscovering Intimacy, Healthy Sexuality After 60, which addresses common emotional pitfalls and provides strategies for rekindling passion. You'll find practical tips on conflict resolution, ways to overcome physical barriers, and methods for restoring that spark you might have thought was gone for good. Grab your copy from the pinned comment and don't delay because units are limited. Sometimes all it takes is the right guidance to breathe new life into a relationship. Reason number two, the impact of grief. Loss is an unavoidable part of life, but when it hits close to home, such as losing a beloved spouse or partner, it can bring every aspect of daily living to a grinding halt including your interest in intimacy. Grief can be overpowering, creating a deep sense of emptiness that leaves no room for desire or pleasure. This state can last anywhere from a few months to several years, and it's common to feel apprehensive about opening your heart again, even to simple acts of closeness. The fear of reliving emotional pain can build a protective wall around you. Over time, this wall can become so sturdy that your libido fades into the background making any form of sexual activity seem irrelevant. If you're grappling with grief, remember that healing rarely follows a neat, linear path. It's normal for your body and mind to need time to adjust. Compassion for yourself is paramount here. When you feel ready, gentle reintroductions to touch, like non-sexual massage or even holding hands, can remind your body that physical closeness isn't a threat. Professional counseling, especially grief-focused therapy, can guide you through these complexities and help you slowly open up to the possibility of finding pleasure and closeness again. Reason number three, serious illnesses. Facing a serious health condition, such as cancer or chronic heart disease, reorders your priorities. 
Treatments like chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or certain medications can drastically reduce your energy, disrupt hormone production, and alter your normal bodily functions. This shift in physical well-being can lead to a steep drop in sexual desire because your body is so focused on recovery that it has little left over for intimacy. The emotional burden of a life-altering diagnosis can also trigger depression or anxiety, both of which play havoc with libido. Don't forget that healing doesn't always mean neglecting your intimate life. While it's true that you may not feel like yourself during treatments, there are ways to maintain some level of sexual health. Light exercise, relaxation techniques like deep breathing, or pelvic floor exercises, often called Kegel exercises, can boost circulation and combat some of the negative effects of inactivity. Communicating with your medical team about sexual concerns is also vital. They can recommend specific interventions, ranging from hormone therapy to safe forms of physical activity that align with your treatment plan, helping you avoid or minimize problems like erectile dysfunction. Reason number four, low libido. You might be surprised to learn just how many men quietly experience low libido for reasons ranging from chronic stress and exhaustion to clinical depression. When your mind is constantly fixated on financial worries, family issues, or workplace stress, sexual desire often falls to the bottom of your list of priorities. On top of that, certain medications, like those used for treating hypertension or depression, can dampen libido even further. Your brain might be telling you there's no bandwidth left for intimacy. But a drop in libido doesn't have to be permanent. Talk to your doctor about possible alternatives to any medications that might be hindering your sexual function. Exercise, especially cardiovascular workouts, is known to elevate endorphin levels, which can naturally spark your libido. Simple changes, like practicing mindfulness or scheduling a few minutes of relaxation daily, can also help shift your body back into a state where desire feels natural again. Reason number five, excessive work and stress. In a world that seems to demand more and more from us, it's easy to let work overshadow everything else. When you're running on fumes, trying to meet deadlines, please clients, or handle an endless to-do list, the idea of bedroom intimacy can feel like a luxury you can't afford. Stress hormones like cortisol can suppress sexual function, making it hard for the body to switch gears into arousal and enjoyment. Gradually, this leads to a cycle where your penis sees less and less action, simply because you don't have the time or energy to engage. If this is you, a structured approach to stress management can be life-changing. Perhaps you can delegate certain tasks, or you might commit to carving out a set time each day for winding down, whether that's a short walk, a warm bath, or a bit of yoga. Don't underestimate the impact of small changes. When you lessen your stress load, your body is far more receptive to the pleasures of intimacy. Reason number six, declining testosterone. Testosterone is the linchpin hormone for male sexual desire. As men age, it's normal for testosterone levels to taper off, especially during andropause, often likened to the male version of menopause. Certain treatments, such as those for prostate cancer, can also suppress testosterone production. When this hormone drops, so does the spark that once ignited sexual interest. Erections may be weaker or harder to maintain, and low energy can further dampen your inclination for intimacy. However, modern medicine offers multiple interventions. If tests confirm a significant hormone deficiency, doctors may recommend testosterone replacement therapy. Supplementing with therapy-appropriate levels can bring back sexual desire and improve overall energy. It's also crucial to note that a well-rounded lifestyle, featuring balanced nutrition, regular exercise, and sufficient sleep, can help sustain healthier hormone levels over the long term. Now that we've explored the core reasons your penis might not be getting regular activity, let's look at what happens when that inactivity becomes a long-term pattern. Stopping or drastically cutting back on sexual use can trigger a series of physical changes that affect not only your capacity for pleasure, but also your basic intimate health. Consequence number one, reduced oxygenation and tissue health. Erections serve a biological purpose beyond sexual gratification. They deliver a surge of oxygen-rich blood to the penile tissues, 
supplying essential nutrients and keeping muscles in prime condition. When erections occur less frequently, these tissues receive less blood and less oxygen, leading to decreased elasticity. Over time, the body replaces smooth muscle fibers with collagen, which is thicker and less flexible, ultimately making erections more challenging to achieve and sustain. One intervention that can help is a penis vacuum pump. By creating a vacuum around the penis, it draws blood into the tissues, promoting better circulation and helping to counteract the collagen buildup. Using this device regularly can support healthier blood flow and preserve tissue elasticity, even if you're not sexually active as often as you'd like. Consequence number two, penile fibrosis and curvature, Peroni's disease. When collagen accumulates within the penile structure, it can form plaques that harden over time. In more advanced cases, these plaques lead to Peroni's disease, characterized by significant curvature of the penis that can make sexual activity painful or, in some instances, nearly impossible. Fibrosis doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process, often linked to long periods of insufficient blood flow and minimal erections. Fortunately, you can take preventive steps, Kegel exercises, which involve contracting and relaxing the pelvic floor muscles, encourage blood circulation, and protect against the rigidity that fosters plaque buildup. Some men also benefit from physiotherapy sessions focused on the pelvic region, aimed at improving flexibility and strengthening surrounding muscles. If plaques are severe, talk to a specialized urologist to determine if treatments like injections or surgery are appropriate. In extreme cases, options like a penile prosthesis can restore function. Consequence number three, penile atrophy. Atrophy is essentially a gradual loss of size, sensitivity, or functionality in the penis. When the penis isn't used regularly, either through sex or healthy masturbation, blood flow is consistently lower and the tissues can start to shrink. Sensitivity may diminish, making physical intimacy less pleasurable. Before you know it, this becomes your new normal, further discouraging sexual activity. However, with some targeted effort, atrophy can be slowed or even reversed. Kegel exercises and the penis vacuum pump remain cornerstone solutions, ensuring that tissues continue to receive adequate blood and oxygen. In addition, certain medications such as Tadalafil can enhance blood flow, making it easier to achieve and maintain an erection. If low testosterone is part of the problem, hormone replacement can help restore both function and desire, safeguarding against further atrophy. Consequence number four, erectile dysfunction ED. Possibly the most well-known risk of letting your penis remain inactive is erectile dysfunction, the ongoing inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sex. Over time, as the penile tissues become weaker and less oxygenated, it can turn into a self-perpetuating loop the more you avoid sexual activity, the harder it becomes to be sexually active at all. Eventually, ED can become chronic, seriously hindering not just physical well-being, but emotional health and intimate relationships too. If you suspect ED is creeping up on you, don't hesitate to seek professional help. Medications like Tadalafil have proven effective and there's absolutely no shame in using them. Healthy, moderate masturbation can also be beneficial as it keeps blood flowing and preserves the penis's capacity to respond to arousal. That said, make sure you're aware of potential pitfalls like over-reliance on pornography, which can desensitize you to real life stimuli if used compulsively. Practical steps to protect and restore penis health. You don't have to sit back and accept these changes as inevitable. A multi-pronged approach often yields the best outcomes. Physical exercise, activities like brisk walking, swimming, or cycling boost cardiovascular health, which in turn supports better blood flow. Targeted therapies, penis vacuum pumps, Kegel exercises, and physiotherapy tailored to pelvic floor health help keep tissues flexible. Medical guidance. If you're dealing with chronic conditions or suspect hormonal imbalances, consult a healthcare professional about options like testosterone therapy. Mental health support, relationship counseling, grief therapy, or stress management techniques can remove emotional barriers to a healthy sex life. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the importance of maintaining an active sexual life well into your later years. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, 
I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss our latest updates. Your support means the world to us. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps share our message with a wider audience. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on today's topic. If you enjoyed the content, type yes in the comments below. If it didn't resonate with you, let me know by typing no. Your feedback is incredibly valuable and helps me craft videos that better suit your interests. Remember, your sexual health is an integral part of your overall well-being. Intimacy isn't just about pleasure. It's about connection, emotional release, and maintaining healthy bodily function through regular stimulation. By taking proactive steps, like communicating with your partner, consulting with healthcare providers, and exploring tools that keep blood flowing where it matters, you can safeguard your intimate health for many years to come. And if you're ready to gain a more comprehensive set of strategies, be sure to check out my digital book, Rediscovering Intimacy, Healthy Sexuality After 60, pinned in the comments section. Quantities are limited, so don't miss the chance to rejuvenate your love life. I hope you're leaving this discussion feeling informed, empowered, and ready to take action. Sexual health is a lifelong journey. Keep exploring, stay curious, and never forget that it's entirely within your power to maintain a fulfilling intimate life no matter what your age. If there's one piece of advice I wanna leave you with, it's this, don't wait. Your body responds best to consistent loving care. When you use it, you're far less likely to lose it. Stay well, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next video.